we uh we're live thank you uh thanks for joining us early obviously there's uh something else that is occurring today and therefore we kind of needed to kick this up a little earlier and so we're here and um we're gonna be making some cocktails because it's quarantiki it's a sunday and we're gonna try and make some of these cocktails have something vaguely to do with that sports ball thing that's occurring in just a couple of hours and we're going to be drinking two different things for the toast although they both rely upon a relatively local rum so the the local rum in this case is not so much just a rum as a cocktail in a bottle so this is from lion distilling and uh, they are the purveyors of that pin, the Drink More Rum pin, on my drinking hat. Um, and various other pins and things that I have lying around. So the Rock and Rum is a play off of the Rock and Rye, which is essentially an old fashioned. So uh, we're going to go ahead and make use of, of this. And in one of these glasses, we have a little bit of some fresh made clove and cranberry syrup. And in the other, we have some Gatorade because Gatorade sports reference, go Gatorade. So this is for my dear wife for her toast. And it is kind of a, a reddish, maybe hints of gold color in it. So that'd be like Kansas City. Um, yeah. So that's that's for her. And there's a little, a little hint of red from the uh, rock and rum uh, in mine. Uh, I'm obviously a Dolphins fan, so I can't really cheer for either one of them. Uh, <laughs> certainly not cheering for Brady. So um, here, a, a toast to successfully getting off our butts today eventually. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lazy, lazy morning. It was. And uh, cleaning up from last night. Oh, and... Cheers to Huey and Kathy. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, yeah. Uh, they got us a uh, shaker and spoon for um Which is a, a monthly cocktail subscription. subscription. And right. we had our second Zoom uh, couple of us get together and do that last night. So yeah, the, um, the, uh, that made this morning uh, slow. Slower, yes. The January one uh, was rum and the February one. No, the December. De was... I'm sorry. December was rum. The January was gin. gin. December ran afoul of the U.S. Postal Service and everybody trying to send packages that we should be drinking, right? Yeah. Um, the, the rum box was a little weak. The gin box, the gin, gin box, box was, was good. actually pretty yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. So shaker and spoon, yeah, they're, they're kind of fun. They give you every ingredient you need Except aside from the, the alcohol drinks. or anything that's like truly, truly perishable. So one of the drinks last night required heavy cream they can't ship you heavy cream in the right. box it's just not happening right so yeah, yeah. so Tell we've got that. a trace mcgee trace hey howdy and, and carrie and david and colleen but ann can't watch oh because she's on her phone right okay. out well she can watch it later and Chris is up and around, and Colleen's on, yeah. and I'm sure there are others that yeah. just haven't commented yet. Yeah. Uh, so feel free, comment. The The wife will keep me up on what yeah. comments are here, and occasionally when you see me do this, it means I'm trying to scroll through comments. So, Super Bowl. There's a Super Bowl going on later today. I don't even know what time uh, necessarily, but I know it conflicted with Quarantiki, so we moved everything up by... Uh, two and a half hours yeah. in the hopes that that would give us time to get through this and still let you guys go off and do whatever you're going to do for the Super Bowl. If you're attending a Super Bowl party, please just be safe. If you're attending a virtual Super Bowl party, I probably don't need to tell you to be safe, but there it is. Be safe. Enjoy yourselves. Hopefully it's a good game. Uh, Kansas City versus Tampa Bay should be. Should be a good game. I ran across an interesting bit of trivia about the Super Bowl this year. Anyone familiar with the concept of a prop bet? So a prop bet is essentially, it's a bet on something that doesn't really, that isn't tied to the outcome of the game or the, the scoring of the game. 
so I mean, sort of the typical prop bet in the Super Bowl case is who wins the coin flip. Uh, for those of you that don't know uh, anything about football, it starts with a coin flip to determine which team is going to receive the ball first, and the other team gets to decide which end of the stadium they are going to defend. Blah, blah, blah. Apparently, this year, the prop betting on the coin flip for the Super Bowl is the highest it has ever been in history. Some astronomically large amount of money is being placed on the outcome of the coin flip, which is intended to be a straight up 50-50 proposition. So that's kind of odd to me, although I guess 50-50 I mean, is better than a lot of odds you might get. So why do I bring this up? Well, I was looking for some connection to the Super Bowl for various cocktails, and oddly enough, amongst cocktails you might want to actually drink, there isn't a Super Bowl cocktail. There does not appear to be a appropriate Tampa Bay or Kansas City cocktail. And I'm looking at you, all you people online that want to do a Kansas City cocktail that has barbecue sauce in it. No, bad, bad cocktail makers, bad, no biscuit. Unless you're doing, I guess, uh, one of the, uh, what is it, with uh, tomato juice, um, Bloody Mary. I guess you could substitute some barbecue sauce for some of the dashes of Tabasco, but we're not going to do that because I can't stand Bloody Marys. So we're not going to do that. So what we are going to do is we're going to riff off the fact that there's an astronomic amount of money that is being placed on the Super Bowl. So we're going to go with a classic cocktail. This is off of the International Bartenders Association Classic Cocktails, and it is a cocktail called the Casino. So the Casino is, is very sophisticated, very casino-esque in the Goodfellas kind of sense of casino. But, but, there was one thing that sold me on doing the casino cocktail, and that is that the primary spirit in the casino cocktail is gin. Why? Why would you say that this would be important for a reference to this particular Super Bowl? It's not just any kind of gin. It's Old Tom Gin, which is an older style of gin that is a little more on the sweet side, it, as opposed to a London Dry style. So given that one of our quarterbacks is, well, for a football player, old, for any normal human being, he's still in the prime of his life, I figured a drink that references the amount of money being spent on the Super Bowl and a quarterback named Tom, who's old by athletic standards, would be appropriate. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start off with the casino cocktail. So how do we make the casino cocktail? Bonita. Bonita. Hi. Hello. Uh, casino cocktail. So what do we need here? This is going to be shaken. So shaker tin. Half ounce Luxardo. So Luxardo, this guy, if you, you've seen me before, I keep meaning to pour this into a smaller bottle so that I have it on the bar and do not have to reach for my ginormous bottle of Luxardo, and I keep forgetting to do so. I just thought I'd double check and make sure that I hadn't. So, oh, all right, we need a half ounce of this. Now, Luxardo is nominally a cherry liqueur, but it's made from the pits, not sweet cherries. So this is completely at the other end of the spectrum from something like cherry hearing, which is a sort of syrupy cherry. This has none of those aspects to it. It's actually a little on the nutty side in its flavor. So we're going to do a half ounce of Luxardo. Oop, we are a little high on that. A little higher than I wanted to be on the Luxardo. Luxardo has some very pronounced flavor, and it is very easy to go overboard with it. That's not a tin. So that's be careful. a shaker plastic. It is a shaker. <laughs> We're just going to go with that. It is a shaker. All right, so there's the Luxardo. That is actually the sweet component for the cocktail. That's it. Half ounce of lemon to go with this. Lemon and gin is sort of a natural mix as opposed to lime and gin. 
there is something about the pH and the flavor profile of lime and gin that is, I mean, it's fine, but it's not, it's not perfect. So vast majority of your gin cocktails that I can think of offhand use lemon juice instead of lime juice. Two ounces Old Tom Gin, which I have right here, and we are going to be using the Tomcat Gin from Bar Hill. I love these guys. We need two ounces of that. I just glanced up and saw David's comment about that's not, and I assumed he was talking about Tom Brady being old and that not being old. Turns out he was talking about the shaker, not tin. Then, then we need, ang not Angostura, orange bitters, which is befitting because Tampa Bay for many, many years played in orange jerseys. They've now gone to a more red-ish color, although bay orange is still part of their team color. So we're going to do two dashes. One, two dashes. Those are pretty heavy dashes for my bearing. All right, that's it. That's all that goes into this. We are going to shake that once I get some ice in there. And we're going to go a little different here. We're going to go with one great big rock like this. And then we're going to go a couple smaller rocks. Like that. Pour that all in there. In the meantime, I'm going to get out a nice chilled glass. Here is a chilled rocks glass, and we are going to shake this all up. What do you think? Looking good? Looking all right? We're good with this? <sighs> all right, chill, all right? Just double checking. Yep. Nice and cold, heavy frost on there. Even if I run my thumb over it, it's not quite coming off. So that is definitely cold enough. Strain this. It doesn't say double strain, so we're not going to worry about that. So we have single strain in here. Up for you. Pretty tight gate on this just so we don't get too much of the ice crystals. There we go. Now we're going to garnish this and the classic garnish for this is a lemon peel wrapped around a Luxardo cherry. Just like that. Ta-da! There you have it, the casino. You could also just drop this in. We're using a monkey tail pick and so the nice thing about the monkey tail pick is even on a taller glass you can just hang the pick off the edge of the glass if you wish so this is the casino international bartenders association classic cocktail neither star nor i have ever tasted this cocktail before not this particular one i mean the cocktail in general we've never had a casino hmm. uh-oh it's a little alcohol forward for me. Well, yeah, I mean, um, that's, a, that's a spirit forward. Right, yeah. but for a spirit forward, that's pretty yummy. Is it? Yeah. You're okay with that, huh? Yeah. Uh, interesting nose. Yeah. But you really get Definitely the... Definitely smell the citrus. I get the, I get the nuttiness of the Luxardo on the nose, oddly enough. The Luxardo has got a nice kind of linger on the taste. Oh, so. I know what I'm getting. I'm getting the smoke off the, uh, oh. the, the incense here. <laughs> We've got a bergamot and ginger incense stick that is burning in front of me, which is changing the nasal profile of this cocktail. Right. Yeah, citrus. We're still a little nutty, though. I love it, yeah. And that is tart. Yeah. Um, it's a good thing that this is one of those classic drinks where the gin actually really matters. Yes. The fact that this is not a London dry gin 
makes that palatable. If it was a London dry gin, you would need to add something else sweet back into that. This almost comes across as a light, like a, a really faint grapefruit, grapefruit, grape, grapefruit flavor. There's not, obviously there's no grapefruit at all in this cocktail, but uh, that is, I, I'm, hmm. It is not to, not to my style. Um, I think I would prefer something like a bee's knees to this. I know my wife would. Or going another direction, going with a Negroni that has a little more pronounced sour bitterness to it. But if the bee's knees is too sweet for you and the Negroni is too bitter, this falls neatly in that middle ground. So I, I'm thinking there are people out there that this would be an ideal cocktail for. So there you go. Gin, Luxardo, lemon juice, orange bitters. Am I missing anything? Nope. Nope. Occurs to me that we have, we have a gunpowder gin that is infused with Earl Grey tea that also would probably go really nicely with this. The tea would add just one more element to this cocktail and make it a little more complex. But I, I, I'm not disappointed in that uh, at all. I mean, it's not going to be one of my favorite cocktails, but it's certainly a, a drinkable uh, a, a drinkable cocktail that falls in that neat middle ground there. So there you go. There's the casino. Very sophisticated looking, your rocks glass, very Mad Men-esque kind of cocktail, right? There you go. Mm. Yeah, I'm not disappointed with that at all. Tart, tasty. The Luxardo and the lemon work really nicely together. The gin is there, but it is certainly not very aggressive. And the sweetness from the old Tom gin really works there. Okay, so that's one. That is first drink down. And obviously that is an homage to the game itself because of the, the betting on it with a little nod toward uh, Mr. Tom Brady. So we have to do a cocktail for each one of the teams. And it doesn't take very long looking through cocktail blogs and the like to realize that there is in fact a Buccaneer cocktail. And that's the next one that we are going to be doing. You will not find the Buccaneer cocktail in most tiki listings, even though it seems to have some very definite tiki elements to it. Uh, there is a ton of different fruit juices in the cocktail. So there's pineapple, well, there's pineapple and lime juice, not too many. Falernum is a primary ingredient. They used spiced rum, which I think most of the time you would want to get your spice from a spiced syrup or something else as opposed to a spiced rum. So that's kind of takes it outside the tiki canon. And it has creme de cacao in it, which seems like an odd choice. But we're, we're going to give it a try. We'll see. Um, yes, there's a hand up. Um, David and Chris are drinking a pina colada cream of coconut, lime juice, pineapple juice, and probitas rum. That, uh, making a, a pina colada with probitas is really dressing up the pina colada. That's, that's, that's a fine, fine choice. I, I much approve of the use of probitas in, well, just about anything, actually, that requires a, a rum that is largely clear in color for visual effects. Well, you, you don't want to do a... So regardless of aging, you don't want to use a dark rum for a pina colada because it will kind of come out muddy brown, and that's not what you're looking for in a pina colada. Pina coladas should be bright white in their color, right? Uh, Cat is drinking out of my water glass, so be careful. <laughs> a big old water glass over there on the table, and the cat Laura is just sticking his head in it. They'll have to expand their bar. The casino sounds right up their alley. So I have the massive bottle of Luxardo. They make much smaller bottles of Luxardo if you're expanding your bar and the Luxardo is one of the things that's not on your bar currently, go for a smaller bottle. Make sure that its flavor profile is something that you like. But Luxardo shows up in a lot of classic cocktails. So I think it's a good choice to, to add to a bar. If it's something else for, like lemon or orange bitters, yeah, you should have lemons and orange bitters on hand. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, what goes in the Buccaneer cocktail and in what order? 
This is, again, a shaken cocktail. So we're going to go with a plastic shaker. Gotcha. See? And we're going to start with the falernum because that is the thickest ingredient, the ingredient that is most likely to coat the insides of your jigger. And we need a half ounce of that. So we will go half ounce. Right, half ounce falernum. Falernum, falernum. John D. Taylor's falernum comes bottled. I've seen a number of different online videos for making your own falernum, and I'm just going to have to do it at some point. But I have a great big bottle of John D. Taylor's falernum, and it's produced by Foursquare. I don't mind giving Foursquare money, as if you've ever seen any part of my bar, you'll know, because they're a lot of Foursquare and Foursquare adjacent rums on my bar. So there we go. We're going to start with the falernum. Pineapple juice. So I know there's a great big pineapple right there. Why didn't I juice that pineapple? A, I didn't want to. Uh, B, I think the pineapple looks good sitting right here. C, it's not quite ripe yet. And D, look, it, it's 100% pineapple juice. Might as well. Okay, I'm just going to use it. Besides, Star is going to finish off this can because she always does. She loves pineapple juice. So we need three quarters of an ounce of pineapple juice. Do, 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 do. There we go. Three quarters of an ounce of pineapple juice. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. I don't know. It's sounding very tiki to me. Three quarters of an ounce. Sorry, folks, that I'm not actually looking at the camera while I'm mixing cocktails. I do not have that professional bartender capability of carrying on a conversation, looking you in the eye, and pouring cocktails. I can do two out of the three. I can talk and look you in the eye and spill alcohol all over my bar, or I can talk and mix cocktails and not look at you, or some other combination thereof. There's like one other combination there. Half ounce white creme de cacao. Do not use <laughs> every recipe for this cocktail that I have seen warns you at least once. Do not use the darker, the brown creme de cacao or the creamy looking creme de cacao. Use the clear creme de cacao, which seems to be the one that I have on hand. I don't feel any real need to have any of the others on hand. I like the clear creme de cacao. Flavor profiles are nearly identical, if not identical, and this is usable in a much wider variety of cocktails. Uh, half ounce. Half ounce is what I'm looking for. As long as I get you all on the line. So I've moved my cocktail instructions and ingredients over here to a page to my left where I've got it sitting up, but it means I don't have to turn this way, nor am I looking way off over here. Just a quick glance here. How's that? Is that working for everybody? It's not too distracting having me do that, I hope. We need one and a half ounces of a spiced rum. We are going to go with the Foursquare spiced rum. If you happen to have something like Kraken lying around, I'm sure you could make it with Kraken and it would be fine. You could make it with Captain Morgan, it would be fine. I tend to use a little higher quality of spice rum in my bar, but this is the first time I've made the Buccaneer, so I'm going to go with the four square spice rum, which is fine. I mean, it's a good spice rum. It's not the top of the line spice rum. And if this works and this comes out as a tasty drink, then at some later point, I'm going to go pull up my um, Chairman's Reserve spiced rum from St. Lucia, which is just uncomparably good. If you see a bottle of that and you like spiced rum, go ahead and pick that up because it's it's really, really just outstanding. Okay, four square rum, spiced, one and a half ounces. I thought that's what the case is, but always good to double check. There's three quarters of an ounce. We have a charity. There's another three quarters of an ounce. We have a charity? Yeah. I didn't realize Quarantiki had an official charity. We have our own charity. We have our own charity? All right. Cool. Hi, Charity. Good to see you. Okay. Falernum, pineapple juice, lime juice, white creme de cacao, spiced rum, a dash of Angostura bitters. One dash. Angostura bitters. 
Ashangastura. There you go. Another one of those things, if your bar doesn't already have some form of bitters on it, I think you can get away with as little as one. A bottle of Angostura will take you most of the way through cocktails. If you need to add a second, it's a toss-up between Peychaud's bitters and orange bitters. Peychaud's is called for in some specific cocktails that I happen to really adore, like the Sazerac, and that's why I would why I think Peychaud's was the second bitters I purchased. But orange bitters are probably more generally useful. So there you go. There's your top three bitters. Orange, Peychaud's, and Angostura. Those should be your top three. You do not need to have uh, almost two dozen bitters, and there's a bottle of celery bitters that is currently infusing upstairs. Yes, I'm making my own bitters now. I could go out and buy celery bitters, but... Why not? I'm going to make my own because I had bitters and all of the other ingredients and it's kind of cool. And in another 10 days, it should actually be uh, worth drinking at some point. Okay, Angostura. I need to grate some nutmeg over this as the garnish, but right now we are going to shake and strain into a cocktail glass. Yeah, okay. All right, we're going to use a chilled cocktail glass. I'm going to throw some ice in here. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to take a chunk of ice, big chunk of ice. For those of you that were listening last week or watching last week and the week before, I talked about having this great big chunk of ice left over from just making really clear ice cubes and that that's what I was then segmenting apart to make these large chunks for doing exactly this kind of shaking. Tin, 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 tin. Will this work? That'll work. Okay. Just looking for tins. Make sure. Oh, that's right there in front of me. Sigh. I'm going to lose my head at some point. All right. We're going to do the same thing that we do usually. We are going to shake this up. Once again, nice frost here. A little lighter than the frost we had on the first cocktail. I stopped shaking because it was getting to my hand cold enough and I could hear a change in the ice, which was telling me that most of the smaller ice chunks were broken up, which is what we wanted. Okay, so Buccaneer cocktail goes in a cocktail glass. We have one chilling here. There's a nice chilled cocktail glass. How's that for you? Strain this. We're gonna do an open gate. I don't really care too much about some of the ice chunks making it through. Barely. If you wanted to add a little more ice to bring this up, certainly do that. Put that to the wash line, like such. There we go. That looks much prettier. We're going to need a straw for that. Sure. How about a white Cthulhu Strathulu? from our friends at Surfside Sips. By the way, it is February. It's February what, 8th, something like that, 7th. So there's still a week worth of time if you were thinking that you might want to get a Surfside Sip straw or set of straws for your sweetie at Valentine's Day. That would be a cool thing to do. They have ones with hearts on them. Oh, they have ones with hearts on them. I wonder if you could get hearts on like a straw Thulu just going up the uh, tentacle, so you oh, have like, like a romantic little tentacle for those of you that are into that sort of thing. Looking at you, Will Salt. So you, you need a garnish for the Buccaneer cocktail. Well, fortunately, uh, we happen to have these cocktail picks. Yep, yeah, you can see the cocktail pick is a skull I've attached with a little pin two little pineapple fronds because there's pineapple juice in here to make the skull and crossbones. There's a little bit of pineapple there. And beneath that is a desiccated uh, lime wheel that has been doused in Angostura bitters to give it a little extra flavor. And that will just sit right in there, right, right in there, like such. Okay, it will fall over just like that <laughs> in the cocktail. 
So this is the Buccaneer. Yay, me hearties. By the way, uh, kudos to the Buccaneers for being the very first NFL team to ever play a Super Bowl in their home stadium. First team ever to do that. So kudos to you guys. Star is going to like that. Star is going to like that. I like that. That's that's yummy. Yeah. Yeah. That's that'll work. Yeah. Yeah. So the yeah. pineapple stands out without being overpowering, which often yeah, there's a pineapple gets lost with I, other juices or it's overpowering, and this the, is a nice. You would think the creme de cacao would give a chocolate note to this. It doesn't. It yeah. blends in with the other yeah, flavors, does, and does. there's an entirely different... I'm thinking to myself, what is that flavor? What is that flavor? I can't figure out that flavor. Oh, it's because that's not a standout single ingredient flavor. That's a flavor that comes about because of the things that are merged together in the cocktail. So that's that's very cool. That is one of the things I actually really like about certain cocktails, is when you throw all the ingredients together and the cocktail has got some complexity to it, but part of that complexity comes because the flavors have merged into some new flavor, as opposed to, yes, I'm tasting the lime. Oh, there's the falernum. Oh, there's the creme de banana. When it all comes together and provides you with a different flavor platform than what you would, what you were expecting from it, and you can't put your finger on it and say, oh, that's due to this. No, it's due to a combination of things. That, that works out really nicely. I'm a little surprised at that. By the way, that drink comes to us from the... 2012 edition of the Mr. Boston's Cocktail Guide, so you didn't have to dig very deep to come up with the Buccaneer. It's not like it's coming from some ancient text of tiki lore, or you had to go searching one of these deep arcane websites with tens of thousands of cocktails on it. No, no, no. The Buccaneer, straight out of the Mr. Boston's Cocktail Guide. I don't know if it is in any of the other major guides, like Trader Vic's or Jeff Morgenthaler's. What is the art of the cocktail? No, that's not right. Uh, it's Green Book. It's right down there in the front of my cocktail library. I think it's over that's there. Me. It's over there. It's the green one? Yep. Or the yellowish green? The cocktail bar? Nope, 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 nope. It's bigger format than that. Didn't even think about Essential? pulling this up. Probably the essential, yes, the essential cocktail. So, oh, this is Dale DeGroff's essential cocktail. So I love this book. Dale DeGroff knows his stuff. I'm going to bet though, I haven't looked. I'm gonna bet the Buccaneer is not in here. So why am I bringing this book up? Uh, Cause I really like this book and you should own a copy and Dale DeGroff is uh, pretty awesome for all the things he has done for the cocktail world. And we go from Brugal rum to the Bucks Fizz and the Bull's Blood. So yes, indeed, the Buckaroo or Buckaroo, the Buccaneer does not show up. So I, I guess the Boston's Guide may be the only place where it shows up, which is kind of interesting. I don't know why. That's actually quite a tasty little cocktail. All right. So there we go. We have an homage to the Super Bowl itself with the casino. We have an homage or an honor to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with the Buccaneer cocktail. So that just leaves us one thing. That leaves an honor to the Kansas City Chiefs. Some of you may know, a lot of you may know, I spent a great deal of my life in Lawrence, Kansas, which is uh, just to the west of Kansas City. So yeah, there was a lot of people that I know that are Kansas City Chiefs fans. And when I was there, Kansas City was, well, to put it bluntly, not particularly good. So I'm very happy for all of my friends that are Kansas City Chiefs fans. I also have not done a tiki drink. Both of these, well, first of all, the, the casino is a classic cocktail. It's certainly no tiki influences. The Buccaneer, it doesn't have its origins, near as we can tell, in sort of the classic tiki melu, although obviously it does have some of the classic tiki ingredients within it. So I wanted to do something that's straight up, no gosh, no kidding, classic tiki drink, 
and then switch it up just a tad in order to do something nice for the Kansas City Chiefs. So, in 1521, a little-known Filipino chief by the name of Lapu Lapu uh, did, did himself a solid by killing uh, Magellan, the, the world-famous explorer, you know, world traveler, etc. And the chief Lapu Lapu cocktail is named after that Filipino chief. And we have done the Chief Lapu Lapu previously as we were working our way through the minimalist tiki. Well, hmm, that's fine. Uh, as I was looking for cocktails to do for this and looking for inspiration, I ran across some people that were doing a drink that they called the Chief Mahomes. I was like, oh, okay, well, that sounds like interesting. Okay, what are the, what are they doing with it? Oh. They're doing that. Oh yeah, I'm not. I'm totally not doing that for a cocktail. Nope. Um, it certainly had no tiki elements to it. So yeah, I'm. I'm not doing that. But I kind of like the name, Chief Mahomes. Can I do a variation of the Chief Lapu Lapu and call it something like the Chief Mahomes? Well, I'm not going to call it something like the Chief Mahomes. I'm just going to call this drink the Chief Mahomes. So there we go. Uh, variation on the La uh, Chief Lapu Lapu. So the Chief Lapu Lapu has three ounces of orange juice. We're gonna keep that. We're gonna go with three ounces of orange juice. It has two ounces of lemon in it. I'm gonna go ahead and split that. I'm gonna go one ounce lemon, one ounce lime. And that's because of the next ingredient. So for the Chief Lapu Lapu, the sweet ingredient is part just simple syrup, just a straight one ounce of simple syrup, followed by passion fruit syrup at one ounce. And the passion fruit syrup is both tart and sweet. Okay, uh, so I need to find something to do for that. Well, here's my chance to make a stamp on the drink and make it chiefs-like. So the other night, I was looking through my fridge, and it turns out I have some unsweetened cranberry juice, like straight up cranberry juice. And this stuff is way tart. So I made a syrup with it, and I infused that syrup with cloves. So this bottle here contains a cranberry and clove syrup, and that's what we're going to use. So instead of doing the simple syrup and the passion fruit syrup, we are going to use this deep, deep red colored clove and uh, cranberry syrup for this. Then we, uh, both the Chief Lapu Lapu and the Chief Mahomes, then do the same spirit base, which is a split of rums, one and a half ounces of a dark Jamaican rum, and one and a half ounces of a simple, clean, light rum. So for the dark Jamaican rum, I pulled something. Oh, we're going to go ahead and use Appleton. And I have, I'm going to go ahead and use the Appleton 12 here. I don't want anything way too funky for this cocktail, especially since I'm playing around with it, and I'm not sure what the flavor profiles are really going to be, so I don't want to do anything way too funky. For the light rum, I'm going to go ahead and use the Maggie's Farm. We, we opened the bottle of Maggie's Farm last week. It's a very clean, crisp rum, so I think that will do just fine in this cocktail. So, once again, shaken cocktail, and we're not going to use cubed ice either. We're going to use, or excuse me, we're going to use cubed ice. We're not going to use crushed ice. So, for once, mark this down in your history books. We're not using any crushed ice this evening. How strange is that? Yeah, I know. It's very, very strange. Three ounces fresh squeezed orange juice. This jar right here, this vial, contains the juice of two oranges juiced earlier today. So we are going to go with three ounces of that. That looks like a really small jar. Are you sure you've got three ounces? I measured ahead of time. There are at least three ounces in this jar. I think there's four, four and a half, something like that. So we're not going to be making a second one of these. Unless they're really good and then I will ask my wife to juice another orange. See? Yeah, that's not enough for another three ounces. And I don't have any canned or fresh jarred or pitcher of orange juice lying around somewhere else. So one ounce lemon juice, one ounce lime juice. 
So I think the lime juice is going to pair better with the cranberry. But I didn't want to go all lime because I want some of the brightness of the lemon. So rather than just go with a straight substitution, I'm going with a split, one each. Lemon and lime. There we go. And we are going to hope that this is not too tart. It could be, because wow, that cranberry syrup is, is pretty tart. So we're gonna go two ounces of the cranberry syrup. Now then, I said this was thick and red. So we'll give you a show here. There you go. Yeah, look at that. That is, that's blood red. Yep. And there's a clove. <laughs> Did I strain it? Yes, of course I strained it to make sure that there weren't any cloves in there. And then I took four or five cloves and threw them in there just so I would amp up the clove flavor over time. So that's why there's a clove in there. It's okay, I'm gonna strain this when I put it in a glass so you're not gonna be chomping down on a clove. That would be bad. Bonita loves Maggie's Farm. They Yay. make some great cocktails at the distillery. I still have got to get to Maggie's Farm. It's up in Pittsburgh. And, uh, it, you know, would normally, under normal circumstances, in the before times, it would just be easy. We just zip on over. Got family in the Pittsburgh area, take some of them with us. And it'd be all sorts of fun. But nope, that's not happening. At least not for a while. Ounce and a half dark Jamaican rum. Nothing too funky here. We are going to go least three quarters of an ounce. Yeah, I know I'm, I'm running low on the Appleton Estate 12 year. Don't cry for me. I've got another bottle in the back. And I knew this was a possibility that I might run out and not have enough for the cocktail. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's fate right there. Tiniest little bit left in that bottle. You know what that means. You guys know what that means? Nobody? Nobody? Star, would you fetch me the infinity bottle, please? Why, oh, yes. What the heck is an infinity bottle, Pooch? Well, here's what I do. When you get down, you have like a little bit, just a tiny little dreg of rum left in one of these bottles. I mean, you don't want that sitting on your shelf. Now, you could just knock it back, but maybe you don't want to do that for whatever reason at this point. Maybe it's a massively overproof Jamaican rum and you don't want to do that. Well, I have an infinity bottle here, and I cannot claim that this is particularly well curated. I do not keep a list of what all is in here. Occasionally, I taste it and go, yeah, that's moving in a wrong direction or that's moving in, in a right direction. I like that. But this is a melding of all sorts of different flavors of rums here. I, I try to keep the really, really aggressive like Jamaican flavors and that sort of thing away from it because I don't want to, it to overpower this. But there you go. There's a home blended rum that will change over time. And uh, I'm particularly happy about that particular infinity bottle. Although there's currently something floating in my infinity bottle which I believe, yes, indeed, part of the cork? is part of the stopper. So we're just going to take that out. Surgery while we're working on this. Okay, all right. Cocktail is ready to go once we put some ice in there and shake this up. All righty, so making sure... Oh, the Maggie's Farm. I didn't put the Maggie's Farm in there. Wow, losing my head. I got so excited about the infinity bottle that I forgot that there's an, another ounce and a half of rum in this. That would be bad. Oh, you, you'll note, this is, a, this is a big format cocktail. There's a lot of stuff in here. So the casino topped out at a total of three ounces of uh, liquid. The Buccaneer is four ounces of total liquid. 
we have almost four ounces of orange juice in this thing. <laughs> now we have three ounces of orange juice. There's a total of nine ounces of liquid in this cup right here. So there's plenty, uh, plenty of liquor there. And we're going to put that in this guy, this little tiki mug, which I will show you in just a moment after we've shaken this up. Here, I am not going to use the big ice rock because we're going to be pouring this back into the mug, ice and all. And as a consequence, I don't want this big chunk of ice coming down in there. So we're just going to go with cubes. Assuming I can get them off of my scoop. Right there. A few more. Right. It's looking good. Oh, ice trying to escape. I need a top for this. Reach over. Top. This is very full. Be a little careful about how I do this. And you can see, I mean, definitely there is there's a red bottom here. That clove and cranberry syrup is very, very thick. So the goal here is to get this all incorporated evenly. Let's see how well we do with the normal shaking. all incorporated because some of that ice has of course melted the liquid level is going to be higher so I am NOT going to turn this up with this being the bottom portion of the glass that would be bad there we go oh good and then this is just going to go right in here and then at some point you might decide you have enough ice in there just because of volume and so then you can gate it, pour the rest in. Oh yeah, it's going to be perfect. So eventually your eyeball becomes pretty good about telling you when you need to stop for ice. So if you can tell, yeah, that, uh, that comes right up to this back opening here. Just about a quarter of an inch below that. We do need a swizzle stick for this. Oh, by the way, I, I wanted to show this off, right? So this is Star's newest acquisition. This is her tiki mug. And yes, it is a Grogu tiki mug. Is that not the cutest little thing ever? So for those of you that are not into the Mandalorian, why aren't you into the Mandalorian? Uh, this is Grogu. This is uh, previously called Baby Yoda, right? So you could also think using this mug might be a play. On the whole Super Bowl thing, because if Yoda is the old master, i.e. Brady, the new master, the young Yoda, would be Patrick Mahomes, right? So there we go. This is the Chief Mahomes. We're going to go ahead and use the swizzle stick that came with this, which has got a little baby Yoda Grogu on top. And because it's one of his favorite snack foods, it's got Great Pig Frog on the other side. So we're going to go stick that in there so the frog is sticking up. We will need a straw. I don't think we want to have a tentacle coming out of the back of Grogu's head. That would be kind of weird. So we're not going to do that. We are going to use a green straw though. How about this one? That'll work. So again, this... So you've seen a lot of the more bizarre... I mean, you've seen a lot of the straw Thulu straws and... Uh, we've got straws that have a pride flag on them. We've got straws that have octopus on the side of them. Surfside sip, we've got bamboo straws from glass straws that look like bamboo from Surfside sips. They make plain old ordinary glass straws in a variety of colors and a variety of diameters. So yeah, there's that. That can go right in there and we'll give this a try see how this is. What do you think? All right, is this going to be good? Is this the test? If the cocktail is good, then it's likely the Chiefs win. If the cocktail is bad, the Chiefs lose. Is, is, that, is that a thing? <laughs> and if it's bad, is there something I can do to resurrect it and make it better? I don't know. We'll find out.
well, there's some. Um, there's a lot of complexity to that. <laughs> Oof. I actually think I I might have been a little wrong. I, I might have wanted to go Ooh. with a little more aggressive Jamaican rum. Maybe you just a, maybe just a little yummy. squirt of some worthy park or something in there would have been would have been nice. But that's that's not bad at all. That, that's that's yummy. It doesn't have quite the same sparkling tartness of the passion fruit. Right. But it's also it's deep red in color, so it makes it a Kansas City color, mm -hmm. right? So that that works. It certainly is sweet enough. So if you wanted to make this at home, the cranberry syrup that I used again, the, it's pure cranberry juice. It's it's straight up. There's nothing else added to it. It's just cranberry juice. I did a two to one of by volume of sugar to cranberry juice with like four or five cloves thrown in and let it sit for a couple of hours after I had dissolved all the sugar in it. And then I poured it into a bottle, let it cool, pour it into a bottle, and then added like four or five more cloves back into the bottle so they'll continue to infuse over time. So that's how you would do the cranberry syrup for this. Do not use something like ocean spray, you know, uh, juice that's, that's just not going to give you the same flavor profile. But there you go. I'm pretty well convinced that's that's a success. The the whole uh, Patrick Holmes uh, or I'm sorry, Chief Mahomes cocktail. So there you have it: the Casino, the Buccaneer, and the Chief Mahomes cocktail, which is a play off of the uh, Chief Lapu Lapu cocktail. Right. So there's the red color of the syrup itself. So you can imagine sticking that in with the other ingredients and very little there is going to do anything to dissuade that red color from coming through. The Appleton is going to make it a little deeper color because of the brown. Uh, it'll, be, it'll lighten up a tad because of the juices and the orange color in it, which I think will make it a little more like Kansas City Red. So there you go. That's going to be, that, that isn't going to be, that, that was a tasty cocktail. I, I think next time I make that, I'm going to go with something with a little more oomph in terms of the Jamaican rum, and that'll add just a little more complexity, and that'll be just fine. But I don't have enough orange juice to do that tonight. So there you go. It is, what, six o'clock? Six o'clock Eastern. Yeah. We have we have zoomed through this. Usually I'm I'm, you're, I'm taking you on a ride for an hour and a half, but you know I got to let you get back and get settled for the Super Bowl. Maybe chow down on some Super Bowl munchies, and sit down and, and hope that it's a really good game. <sighs> so there you go. We're we're done here for the forty third session of Quarantiki. So we have, wow, we have nine more. And then we'll have been doing this for a full year. That just doesn't seem seem possible. Uh, thank you all uh, for everybody that has been with us, uh, if sort of every step of the way all, along this process of, of putting this together. We've gotten better, I think, I hope. <laughs> I know we've gotten better from the early ones. So uh, hopefully we will continue to get better as we go on. And looking forward to that countdown to the, to the one year mark. And also looking forward to having to maybe change the name because maybe we're not going to be in quarantine anymore. And that would, that would be really nice. As always, we'd like to thank those that make it all possible for us to do this, like Surfside Sips, providing all of the wonderful, well, they don't provide it, but we get a discount on it. So that's awesome. The various bar gear that we have here from like Black Lagoon Room, and uh, Tiki Tony, Tiki Tony that did the I should have mentioned Tiki Tony. Oh my gosh, mass massive oops there. Tiki Tony is the one that did the Grogu mug. Uh, yeah, that's a that's that's a custom design. It's 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 awesome. Uh, not custom to me. It's custom to him. Uh, so I mean, that's pretty cool. Just uh, all, all of the people that uh, that make this possible. So, and well, of course, that also includes all of you because it's not possible to do this unless there's people that are actually interested in tuning in. So I love you. Thanks for hanging out with us for another week. 
uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend, whether you're watching the Super Bowl or not. And hopefully we've added another couple of cocktails to your repertoire. Repertoire? Repertoire? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, to that list of drinks that you could possibly drink in the future. How's that? So there we go. Talk to you later. Love you much. Have a good week. Yeah. How do I close this? Oh yeah, I hit the button, this big red button says end live video, bottom left here.